Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a potential murder mystery, kind of. And it's actually based on a somewhat recent study that explores a hypothetical but a somewhat intriguing question. Could someone out there be killed by a primordial black hole if it basically passed through them? In other words, if primordial black holes exist, and if one of them arrives to planet Earth, what would actually happen if it passed through someone's body, especially through their head? And turns out that the answer in this case is somewhat intriguing, because in this case it's not a definitive yes, but it's also not a definitive no. There are certain things we have to consider. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess first let's actually define what these primordial black holes are. And here this is the idea proposed by Stephen Hawking, but also one of the potential explanations for the mysterious dark matter. In essence, these are hypothetical black holes that might have formed right after the Big Bang. And they might have formed with very different masses. Some of them could have been very massive, but in terms of numbers, the majority was actually proposed to be somewhat small. In this case, formed as a result of early collapse of matter in the early very dense universe. So these are primordial black holes, not born as a result of some kind of a supernova. And so back in the day, scientists argued that, in some sense, if we had a bunch of these primordial black holes, with a relatively small mass equivalent to a typical asteroid, they might be responsible for the effects we usually refer to as dark matter. In other words, dark matter might really just be very small, practically invisible black holes. And so for the past few decades, there's actually been several searches for these primordial black holes in order to see if it's even possible or if they really exist out there. Although first of all, based on previous calculations, we know that there has to be a minimal mass. Because Hawking also predicted that black holes evaporate over time, and because the universe is believed to be approximately 13.8 billion years old, any black hole below a certain mass, specifically 10 to the power of 15 grams, would have already evaporated, disappearing a long time ago. Or actually exploding a long time ago, because they are expected to eventually explode. There should be some additional videos in the description describing this process. And if we actually compare this mass to a typical asteroid, it would maybe be just a little bit smaller than Bannu, the asteroid visited by NASA a few years back. Here this would be an asteroid possibly about 300 meters across. Except that instead of an asteroid, this would be a black hole. But a much more realistic minimal size or minimal mass for a primordial black hole is actually approximately 100 times that. So maybe just a little bit smaller in size than Deimos, one of the natural moons of Mars. But they also have an upper limit, and here the limit is at least 10,000 times more massive than this object. And that's because if these primordial black holes were much more massive, we would have already seen the effects from them through various surveys involving gravitational lensing. And that's because anything that's over 10 to the power of 19 kilograms in mass is very likely going to leave a very specific gravitational lens as it passes through the solar system. And we've actually discussed one of the previous papers from a few years back where this was attempted by looking at the Andromeda galaxy. And even though thousands of such events were predicted based on this primordial black hole hypothesis, only one event was detected and it was actually thought to be caused by some kind of a planet. And so as a result, it's actually believed that if these primordial black holes are real, they have to be a lot less massive, but massive enough to survive for 13.8 billion years. And so there's a very specific mass limit. And so if their mass is indeed equivalent to a typical asteroid, they would actually be very difficult to find, mostly because in terms of size, they would basically be microscopic, around the same size as a typical cell in your body. And naturally, a black hole of such a small mass and small size would be very, very difficult to find. Except that, if these are indeed dark matter, here we can assume that there are a lot of them out there, and many of them potentially pass through the solar system, even shooting through planet Earth and of course our moon. And intriguingly, one of the potential explanations for the mysterious 1908 Tunguska event was maybe one of these unusual black holes passing through the planet. But the black hole explanation in this case might actually be difficult to fit with some of the observations. We've discussed this idea behind black holes or even dark matter explosions causing the Tunguska event in one of the previous videos in the description. More intriguingly though, there was actually a study that proposed that we can maybe see these passages by looking at certain locations and certain craters on the moon. Specifically by detecting certain craters on both sides of the moon, as if something shot through the moon might indeed give us a telltale sign that something primordial, specifically a primordial black hole, passed through the moon causing the explosion sometimes in the past. But so far nothing has been confirmed and nothing has been seen yet. Nevertheless, it's clearly a possibility. 
And very similar formations, especially tiny microscopic tunnels, could also be detected here on Earth in various fossils and various samples. All of this was proposed in some of the previous studies in just the last five years. But here all of this assumes one thing. These primordial black holes are dark matter, they are very numerous, and they occasionally pass through the planet. And while even though there is no evidence yet, the actual theoretical predictions kind of imply that it's very possible. As in these primordial black holes can indeed pass through the planet, but because such events would not be very common, it would actually take us quite a while to discover the effects. But one of the previous studies even suggesting that if these black holes are not moving too fast, they can even get stuck inside a planet or an asteroid and eventually, extremely slowly, absorb everything on the inside, growing larger and larger in size and eventually hollowing out the entire object. In theory, this is a lot more likely inside stars, but it could even happen inside planets. And so the obvious next question is, ok, well what if it actually passes through a person? Can it kill someone? In other words, can such a black hole leave a tunnel inside the person's body with maybe somewhat lethal effects? Well, in a lot of previous studies this was kind of left unanswered, and a lot of studies even suggested that it should be ok. But it was not based on physical calculations. Yet this new study by Robert Scherer was. Here Scherer provides several calculations with his results suggesting that yeah, it might not be very safe. And because of two specific physical effects. One of them coming from the black hole itself, the tidal interactions. That's essentially when black holes, for example, destroy stars, such as during the tidal disruption event. But the other one being the shock wave itself, as a really massive object passes through physical matter. And here both of these effects are assessed separately. And so I guess let's start with the tidal interactions. In theory, if this was a much more massive and a much larger black hole, it would naturally tear the body apart cell by cell because of relatively powerful tidal effects. But here we're talking about black holes less massive than asteroid Bennu and smaller in size than the actual cell they're passing through. And so many effects here will actually depend on one major property, the tensile force inside our cells. Or how strong the cells are in holding each other and preventing something from tearing them apart. And turns out that in most of our body this would actually be not a problem at all. And that's because as these black holes pass through the body, they're most likely going to be moving really fast, approximately 200 kilometers per second. And so it's actually going to take only one microsecond for this black hole to pass through the entire body. And that actually does not give this black hole enough time to produce necessary tidal effects. And so if such a black hole passed through, for example, your body, it would unlikely to leave any permanent damage. But what about the brain? Well, the brain is maybe a different story, because damage to the brain can be fatal. And in this case it would be somewhat similar to having some kind of a needle shoot through the brain at 200 kilometers per second. And so if such a black hole passed through the head, some of the tidal forces might be able to tear apart some of the brain cells. But according to the study, these black holes would have to be just a little bit more massive than some of the previous assumptions. So here we're talking about black holes with masses even bigger than asteroid Bennu. But apparently tidal effects are not really the main problem. Because here, by passing through our body, these black holes would also produce very similar effects to what we expect from a bullet. In other words, there's also a shock wave. And it's really this gravitationally induced shock wave that might be the biggest issue. And so as the black hole enters the body, the density wave created by this black hole bullet is going to ripple through the body with the shock wave physically damaging nearby cells and transferring a lot of heat energy in a very very similar way to a typical bullet. As a matter of fact, here in the study, the energy calculations actually match something we know. The energy of the shock wave is very similar to a typical 22 caliber bullet moving through the human body, with a more massive black hole providing more energy, or thus being equivalent to a bigger bullet. And so it's really the shock wave here that potentially creates the most damage. And so even though a primordial black hole with a massive asteroid battle might not produce significant tidal effects, it is going to produce a very powerful shock wave that most likely is going to be fatal to anyone it passes through. But the thing is, we've never actually seen anything like this anywhere. And so what exactly does this tell us? Does this actually imply that primordial black holes don't exist and that dark matter is possibly something else entirely? Well, not necessarily. Because here, statistically, if we consider the total number of these predicted primordial black holes with the mass of a typical asteroid, and at the same time, if we consider the total human population and the average human density on the entire planet, we actually end up with a really really small number of potential collisions per year. Here the predicted number is approximately 
10 to the power of minus 18 events every single year. Or in more layman terms, it would take billion, billion years for just one event to happen somewhere on the planet. Which is possibly why we haven't seen it yet, but this is for human-related collisions. The chance for this object to pass to the planet and to leave a mark in some kind of a sediment is actually much, much higher. And so we actually do expect at least a few of these collisions to potentially have happened in the past. And so here we have a definitive answer to two hypothetical questions. First question, can a primordial black hole kill someone? With the answer being, very likely, assuming that it passes through someone's head and assuming that it has a certain mass. And mostly do so through the production of very powerful shockwave effects. But then the next question is, will it ever kill someone? And here the answer is almost certainly no. In terms of probability, it's just extremely unlikely to ever happen. And the only chance for us to discover the effects from these black holes on physical matter is to either look at the moon and possibly find some kind of a crater there, or by discovering some kind of a tunnel by looking at fossils right here on planet Earth, because here these tunnels will be very specific. Basically these super straight and very long tunnels that would practically go through the entire planet. But because here we're talking about microscopic sizes, it would still be somewhat challenging to find. Which means that the absence of such events does not actually tell us that the primordial black holes don't exist. It just tells us that they are much more difficult to find than we thought previously. And that also means that if they do exist, it potentially opens up an entire new way for us to generate free electricity. And you can actually learn about how this could be done in one of the previous videos in the description. And so definitely a somewhat intriguing study and somewhat interesting conclusions, but until we actually figure out if these black holes exist, we're not going to have much more. And so until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.